Greetings. Welcome to the Yang Style Short Form Tai Chi Course. I'm Michael Gilman. This is the seventh lesson in our series, and we're approaching the end of the short form. So let's get right into it. Uh, we're, let's review up to where we're at via the last tape. All right, starting from the back. This is officially called the mountain top stance, but I tend to, in this particular instance, call it the Wu Chi stance. Just nice, relaxed, and balanced. Getting your breathing going into the lower Dan Tian. When you're ready, sinking. Commencement of Tai Chi Chuan. Ward off left. Right push upward. Roll back. Press. And push. Fist under elbow. Step back and repulse monkey. Slanting, flying. Raise hands. Stork spreads its wings. Left brush knee. Needle at sea bottom. Fan through the back. Turn and white snake puts out tongue. Roll back. Press forward and push. Single whip. Waving hands like clouds. One. Two, three, four, single whip. Fair lady works at shuttles.
All right. So we're how wonderful, how wonderful, what a wonderful journey. Now, considering the timing of the of the form, traditionally, my teacher, Master Choi, when he taught the short form, he taught it to go in about six minutes to go through this short form, 34 movements. And um, so that speed that we just were going to was about that speed. Now, there's no reason that it can't go faster, and there's no reason why it can't go slower. And it just depends upon kind of what your goal is, what you want to accomplish, whether it be relaxation or, or, a little, or getting more energized or kind of a more meditative quality. It also has to do with your breathing. Usually we try to coordinate the movements fairly well with the breath. And uh, so as your breathing becomes deeper and more relaxed, the, the form tends to go a little slower. But um, the important thing is that it all be done at the same speed. If it's fast, it's just consistently fast, not fast and then slow and fast and slow. In Chen style, other forms of Tai Chi tend to have fast movements and slow movements, whereas the Yang style, it's all a very kind of consistent. Now, I remember the first time I saw Yang Jun, who is the current head of the Yang family, doing his form. And uh, it was very, it was smooth and easy. And then there'd be this uh, period of like, almost like holding a pose and then back into the form. And I, I didn't understand it at the time, but I think I understand where he's coming from now in that sometimes we <clears throat> like to let the spirit or the shen, the spiritual energy, the shen energy, really go out a lot. And so sometimes it takes a while for this, for this energy to fully extend. So it looks like you're kind of holding it while that energy is going, 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 and then we draw it back in. So in those cases, the, the, it, it sort of takes the flow out of it, but the flow and the beat is still going. Like if, you, if, if you're doing the form in a certain beat, then when you're doing this expression, the expression is still in that same kind of rhythm, but then comes back and you can get, you get right back into the same beat. So uh, there's no right, so what the bottom line is, is there's no right or wrong about the timing of the Tai Chi form. Yang style, I'd say, tends to have a nice flowing quality to it. All right, so let's add in, let's add in the next uh, few movements and um, Let's see how far we can get today. So let me demonstrate first what's coming up, and then I'll bring John in. <clears throat> so we've just finished fairly. So we're going to do repeat, ward off left, right push upward, roll back, press forward, and push, which is sometimes collectively known as grasping the bird's tail. This whole series of movements, ward off, roll back, press forward, push, is sometimes collectively called grasping the bird's tail, all right? It's sort of like the chorus in a, in a musical. Okay, so ward off left. We outreach, neutralize, step in. Ward off left. Right push upward. And then roll back, press, and push. Now before, uh, before I bring John in here, I need to talk a little bit about this foot movement. So far, all of the stepping movements that we've done are what we call yin stepping, Tai Chi stepping, oh, unweighted foot stepping. 
For instance, um, when we when we did um, you know, left brush knee, well, let's see, have we even done any? I don't even know if we've any taken any forward steps in this form. Um, hmm. In the long form, in the long form, we use a lot of unweighted foot turning. This is going to be used what we call weighted foot turn. So when well, actually, the first piece, we kind of take off a little bit and then step ahead. The second one is what we call weighted turn, is that the weight stays on the, on the forward foot as we turn out. And then we commit, gather into the quad, and then step. As opposed to, we could do it, come all the way back first, take the weight off, then shift and open and step. But in this case, we're, in this case, we're not going to do that. So uh, let me show you just the foot movement for, for this. We take a little of the weight off for this neutralize, but it's not all the way back. It's a little weight off, enough to free up this toe to turn out some. Then we roll up into the qua, gather the qua, and we're going to step a little bit a little bit to the uh, left of straight. And then here we take just a little bit off of the forward foot and pivot out. The whole hip is going to open at the same time. This is called weighted foot turn. Then we gather into the quad by rolling up the back foot, step out, and come out. So let me show you, let me bring John in here and show you why and uh, wherefore. Okay, hey John. So if you're over here. <clears throat> so here I am. Now he's going to come in with a straight kind of punch to the center. Now I'm going to, again, I'm not going to try and stop it. I'm not going to you know, interfere with it. I want to keep it going in the same direction that it's headed, only I don't want it to hit in with me. So, we outreach, again, I remind you that I don't want to try and deal with it. One, it's, it's a gain momentum. As, it's, as he's punching in, I don't want to try at the last minute to deal with it. I want to outreach, join with it as soon as I can, outreach, allow it in, okay. the other hand stays up for protection, then I step ahead, so here he comes in, okay. I threw him off and then push him away. So there's a little bit of outreach, let him in, a little pull here as I step and then pong them out of the way. Now I could, I could either hit him or like I just originally showed you, just push him out of the way. But let's say that I'm going to hit him. If I go to hit him and he stops me, okay. So at this point, he's got a couple of different things he, he can do. He withdraws his hand, and he decides he can push me. Right? He decides to push me. As he pushes me, I'm just going to neutralize. You see how he's crossed up here. I'm going to close him up. And then we do what we call pull step pull, which throws him off, and then again push him away, shove him out of the way. So this, this, uh, this kind of pong is very much just like shoving somebody out of the way. And if we do it with a, you know, a short burst of energy, it could send them quite, quite send them flying. Okay, so the other possibility is that he stops and he, he grabs me. He just grabs me. At this case, at this case, again, I want him closed up, but I'm going to, instead of just neutralizing him, I'm going to grab him grab him, you see, and then I can push him away. 
So I have a choice here, either if he's pushing, I'm just going to go with it, or if he just grabs me, I'm just going to pull him and grab him and then do that. And then the rest is roll back, press forward, and push. Okay? Okay, so let me, I'll see you back here in a minute. Okay. So look and see, see if you can see this. The punch is coming in. I outreach, let it come in. So this turning turns out this front toe. The other hand is dropping down into what we call center position or into, on, is into a guard. Then shift the weight. Make sure you gather the energy into the quad. Step ahead just slightly to the left of straight and pong. Just the same, this is the same ward off that we did it for the very first movement. Turning. Sinking. Stepping. Now, important, you can see how important it is. If I don't turn out this front toe, say I just neutralize and I go to step ahead, my hips are going to be really cramped in or I'm going to have to change my direction, way change my direction. So when we do this, when we neutralize, we turn out the toe so that then I've got the chi gathered in my qua and I can open it and have a good solid stance facing in the direction that my partner is going to be at, my opponent. Okay, so outreach and neutralize. Turning out the front toe. Shifting, gather into the quad by rolling up the back toe. Step ahead, make sure you don't fall. You place the foot down and palm. This ends up right in front of your chest. The other hand is down, just like it was for movement number one, number two. Okay, now, keeping the weight pretty much on the forward foot, we're going to bring the energy over to the, to the right side, left side, I'm sorry, gather into that qua. Step ahead, and now we're doing the same kind of right push upward we did before. Now look at this from the front. Neutralize, gather and step, pong open. Now you want to keep this hand right in front of the center of the chest. So it's coming, the body, it's not you're not going to do, if you did this, just try and neutralize with the hand, you'll end up falling this way. You have to take this energy by opening your torso. It's the, it's the hip, the hip that's pulling this. The arm isn't doing it. You'd want to think that the arm is doing this, but it's the hip. It's like there's some, it's right here that's pulling my whole body. This hand comes over to protect. It could possibly be an arm bar or an arm break. This hand turns over as you step. Now you're in the same position we were in movement number three and right push upward. Then we're going to repeat the same roll back, press, and push. We could come up with lots of variations for this, but we're, we're not going to. We'll just keep it for uh, this grasping the bird's tail, pretty much the same. Okay, so once again, outreach, join, lead in, gather to the qua by rolling up, step, and palm. Use your torso. Turn out to the corner. Roll up, 
gather into the claw, step slightly to the right of the wall, and right push upward. Roll back, press, and push. Okay, and now we're going to repeat single whip once again exactly the same way we did it before. Exactly the same, single whip. Turn in, open, gather into the right claw, step straight towards that wall, and open. Okay, once again. <clears throat> After Fair Lady, outreach, turn out, neutralize, roll up, step out, and pong. Neutralize, roll up, step out, push upward. Roll back, press, and push. Single whip. Turn. Open. Now, I want to remind you about the, the stepping for this single, this turning in the toe for the single whip. It's so important, and I'm sure I talked about it in the tape when we covered single whip, but I want to just remind you once more here. Since we're going from slightly to the right of this wall, slightly to the right, we're going straight towards this wall. This is a big turn. So it's very important on this right foot, since it's going to be the supporting foot, that you turn it all the way into 90, straight towards this wall, if a little bit more, but not any less. If you turn it less and you try to do this movement, even I, I, I've got, you know, I can open my hips, but it's very difficult to make this step. It's very important that when you do this, you turn all the way into straight. Then, when you go and you open, you can make a nice direct step towards that final direction, all right? Very, very important, so pay attention to that. Okay, John, if you come back in, so let's look at the next section. I guess I could have demonstrated, but what the heck, I'm not going to. Okay, single whip, so, so he's gonna grab me. Now, there's so many things I can do, but he's got me from the top. If, if I try and neutralize, he can let go, and he's on the top, and he can get me. So uh, I can roll over like we've done this before. I just decided, because, because of the circumstances, he's got me, I'm just going to get out. And this is called snake creeps down. I'm just going to drop down. It's kind of a sudden movement. And it's, it's for somebody who's very strong. He's got a good grip, you know. And um, so I just really want to get out. Now, traditionally, you'll see in Tai Chi that I will pull him. Somehow, I pull him down using this. I just blam. And in the long form, I do a, a pulling down version. But in this version, it's, it's, I'm, all I'm going to do is get out of there. OK. So maybe you're just over just a little more. OK. So I get out. But now he follows up with a punch with this side. OK. So I get out, but he just immediately follows with a punch. I'm going to have to deal with that. So I, so, so I, I get out. As he punches, I block. I then step up and hit him, kick him, knee him. I have all kinds of options on that in this case. 
I get out. He goes to punch. I neutralize and kick or hit to seven stars. Okay, let's, let me work on those, then I'll call you back. Okay. Okay, now, now uh, look at this. I get out. He goes to punch. I neutralize. Turn out the front toe so I can open my hip. And this side comes up what we call to form seven stars. Let me show you this from the front. Now, in order, if I just try, if, without dealing with this back angle, if I try and come down, my hip is too close. I could pull this way, kind of, but since I'm going to sit down, my hip isn't open enough. So what we do is we turn out the back toe first. I pivot out the back toe. Now I can sit easily. I could go down as far as I wanted to. So you'll see in the form, you'll see people do all kinds of creeping down at every different level. Depends upon your, the strength of your legs. You can just creep down a little bit, or you can creep down a lot more, or whatever. Uh, so turn out the toe, and the whole body's dropping. Because I'm not just going to pull the arm. The whole body is dropping, dropping. Then he goes to punch. As I shift forward and turn in the back toe, as I shift forward and turn in the back toe, I've neutralized. This hand is coming to the waist. Now we turn out the front toe, bring the weight onto that foot and step up to form seven stars. Dingbo stance on toe. The hands are crossed here. You'll see a lot of difference. Sometimes palm downward, sometimes this way, this way. Never seen it this way, but somewhere in this area. And they're crossed about at the wrist area. So you can see it this way, you can step up, or since I'm punching, it has to have a little bit of an, like a 45 degree angle. The right hand underneath the left hand. Now the shift, the, this weight, this, this, this weight change is, is a little difficult. Because you've come down, you're on this, you've turned in the back foot, you're on here. You've got to turn out the toe, shift onto this foot, roll up then step and do dings, dingbo stance on toe. It's, it's, it's kind of a workout. Uh, it's, it's not kind of a workout, it is a workout, and uh, which is what we're doing, most of us are doing Tai Chi for. So, um, great. <laughs> okay, so here, here we go. Single whip. Turn out the back toe and open your body. Don't open the back toe and come straight back. Turn your toe and open to about 45, then come back to straight. Turn out, but you're not going to use, you're not going to turn the whole body out here. You're going to just turn the toe out so you can go stepping straight ahead. Thing bow on toe. Get out, whatever level you want. He goes to punch block. The other hand start, the right hand is folding towards the hip. As you turn out, it is now down by the waist. The other hand makes a fist and we step up to form seven stars. Let me show you in this direction so you can see how this hand folds in. Get out. See, now, this was in a whip. It starts to, as we shift him forward, it starts to fold into a fist 
and it folds into the waist. We turn out and make a fist with this hand and slide forward. Step up to form seven stars. This is a hit. This can be kicking. This can be the knee or the toe. Snake creeps down. Step up to form seven stars. Okay, so let's uh, review up to this point from where we left off. Outreach, ward off left. Right push upward, turn out. Step ahead, open, roll back. Press. Push. Single whip. Snake creeps down. Step up to form seven stars. The next we're going to do is called Retreat to Ride a Tiger. And turn around and kick horizontally. All right, John. Okay, so following, okay, so creeps, that's creeps down, blunk, he punches there, block, hit, kick, okay. So here I am, so though he grabs me with this hand. Okay, so if he's holding on, okay. Okay, hold on good and tight now. If he's holding on and I twist, it sets him off. But I decided I don't want to particularly, I don't need him in. What I want to do is get him off. So if he holds on good and hard, he's going to come in. But even if he lets go, then I'm joined with him. So. I'm going to step back, get back, and as I pull back, I neutralize. Now, John is just going to follow up with a hook around to my head because my energy, since I'm stepping back, he's going to step in and hook me. He thinks I'm nice and open, which I was. I knock off. He steps in, and now, see? This is called Retreat to Ride a Tiger. He's completely open, and I can just to, I could do, throw him, throw him in either direction. He's completely outside me, and I can attack him in any way. So it's here. One, two. And this is Dingbo's stance on toe, which says, yes, I can kick if I want. I haven't made up my mind yet. Just depends. OK, I guess that's it for the second one, but then I'll, I'll talk. We'll talk about turnaround. So let's work on this. <clears throat> the right hand opens up, both hands open up. The right hand's going to turn palm upward, and it's going to come down. As that happens, the right hand, the left hand, presses slightly out. Then he goes to punch, and I block outward. Now the foot movement, we're at Dingbo stance on toe, we're just going to step back and replace into Dingbo stance on toe. So this is just a step. 
Now the tendency is going to be to just step back and do this. Make sure you step, you sink the weight into the quad, your front quad. Then you have some power to do the rest of these movements. If you just are falling back, then he could pull. And uh, remember, stepping is the time you're the most vulnerable. So say he's got a hold of this, and I just were to step, when he pulled me, I could get pulled over. But I'm in this qua, my, I'm in my right qua, left qua, sorry, my left qua. When I go to step back, I just sink deeper into it. If he pulled me, I'd still be in this qua. I, as soon as I touch the toe, then I can make this thing happen. All right? So sink the hands open, take off with the left hand as you come back, and then as you replace into dingbo on toe, the other hand comes up. Now this traditionally, it looks just like stork spreads its wings, which it does. The only thing that differentiates it is that it's a little wider and more kind of more centered out this direction as opposed to back or forward. It's more sort of has angles outward, a little bit wider and more outward. This is called retreat to ride a tiger. Make sure to get back first, then open. So from the proper direction, sink back, take off, and open, block. Step back, and open. Retreat to ride a tiger. Let's put this in. Outreach, ward off left, slightly to the left of straight. Could be straight or just slightly to the left. Right push upward, sink into the left claw, step ahead, and pong. Roll back, press, push. Single whip, make sure to turn this all the way in. Gather to the inside. Step and open. Snake creeps down. Open up the back toe. Drop down. Block. It's basically just a pong. The other hand's folding in. Turn out. Make a fist. And step up to form seven stars. Retreat to ride a tiger. OK. Now the next movement is tricky. And it's tricky on a couple of different levels. But mainly it's tricky because I'm on a carpet and it's very difficult. And I have a kind of grippy, a little bit of a grippy bottom. In order to do this movement easily, if we, if we were on uh, linoleum, if we were on wood, if we were on a smooth surface, and we had uh, like a, you know, a nice smooth bottom shoe, this movement just glides. But it's, it's, it's basically a spinning around movement. But you're going to see, I'm going to neutralize John around and spin around and kick. Now, It's kind of a funny movement, you know, martially. Uh, I've seen it used before. It's a little tricky, not, not very much uh, successfully. But um, anyway, it's, it's a good balanced exercise. So we're going to, we're sitting on the right leg, and we're going to keep the weight on the right leg until we get around back to the sort of almost to the same position. Then we're going to step out towards this left corner. At this point, we're going to make a horizontal kick. Now this is, in the short form, this is our only foot kick. 
other than when we do dingbo stance on heel and raise hands, that is a stomp more than a kick. This is a kick with the side of the foot. It's called a horizontal kick. In Tai Chi, we have three kicks, and in the long form, you'll see them. We have a toe kick, which is a snappy kick. You just kick up with your toe. We have a thrust kick, which is a heel kick, which you're kicking out with the heel. And this is a side, this is done with the side of the foot. So it's, it's a, what's called horizontal kick because it's all on one plane as opposed to something that rises. This, this kicks along the horizon. So this is very good exercise. It's a nice exercise to do. And um, so again, this is one of those movements that if you, in the beginning, you can do it, you know, just nice and easy and low. You can do it medium height, and you can do it high. And you see some of the younger people particularly do it uh, way, way high. Um, and generally speaking, generally speaking, it's done fast. I try not to, myself, do it faster than every other movement because, I don't know, I just want to keep in that same pattern and rhythm. So uh, when I do the kick, I try to do it in the same uh, rhythm. If I'm doing demonstrations or something like that, sometimes I'll do it fast just for the effect of it. But um, for our practice, I think it's better to do a nice, smooth, easy round kick. Now the hands, the hands want to sort of balance the foot kicks. In the snap kicks, they go outward, or the thrust kicks, they go outward to balance the movement. It's like if you're holding up a, you know, like you're tightrope walking or something. You have your hands and you have this weight and for the thrust kick. In this kick, what we're going to do is since the kick is moving from left to right, the hands are going to move a little bit from right to left so that it balances this movement off. It helps you, because if I don't do that, it's easy to get thrown too far. So the hands are going to kind of balance that. And as you'll see when, you, when I show you with John, there is a reason for it. But this is, this is particularly, this carpet is particularly difficult. And for instance, if you do it on grass, you have to be careful and just sort of walk it around more. If I wasn't teaching this, and I was in the grass, maybe I would just make a couple of little steps around to, in order to make this kick. But we should try you at home. If you have a smooth surface, this, uh, this works well. But you have to be careful about this because there's a lot of pressure on this knee that you're working on. And if you have a carpet like this, it's a little tricky. So I just uh, warn you to be careful. And if you have a carpet and it's not smooth and you don't feel comfortable, walk it around. For instance, I'll show you walk around. Left foot around. Right foot around. Left foot around. Now I'm in the same place I'm going to end up being, and you make this little horizontal kick. If you're going to spin, Around. When I'm at my studio and something sm have a smooth surface, I can easily keep my weight on this foot and then step out. Here it's just very difficult. Okay, so the hands, the hands are going to lead the movement, which you'll see. I'm going to neutralize something around. And they're going to stay at about the same horizontal level as we come around. They're going to come touch in the front. Then as the kick comes out, they're going to move slightly to the left. So the whole time, they've been basically on a horizontal plane. OK, I think it's time that John can come in here. Okay, uh, here I am at uh, Retreat to Right Tucker. So he's going to punch inward with this side. 
So first thing is I'm going to empty and neutralize the wrist and elbow. I can add a little pull, which upsets him. Now, what I'm going to do at this point is the momentum of my, of, of my turning is now he's over there. I've spun around, and now I can kick him at whatever level I want to. So as he comes, I can add a little pull, come around, and now I'm on him. And I can either pull him this way and throw him over my leg or just touch him and back there for, for a kick. Now let's just do the, the, the next movement. I think we have, uh, maybe have time for it. After I've done the kick, he, he punches me just straight right here. Now this one doesn't necessarily follow the kick. He punches me after kick. I neutralize and just straight punch into the ribs. This is called shoot a tiger with bow. Okay. So it's just a, a it's just a neutralize and a hit into the ribs. It's a very powerful, powerful punch. Okay, thank you. So let's look at this. So this is definitely the hardest hardest movement in this form. So um, it's going to take, it takes practice to feel comfortable with it. I can tell you that. Okay. So first the hands go around. The right hand is going to fold, fold over and move. The left hand is just going to come up. And they're both relating to the outside. So the weight is all on the back of the right foot. And we have this momentum. We spin around and step with the left foot towards the corner. The right hand touches. Now, my body, here's John right over here. My body is about a 45, about a 45 degree angle to him. I'm not going to turn all the way to face him. Then it would be very difficult to try and kick horizontally. If my body is sideways to John, who's here, it's easy to open and kick. If I was straight to John, it, I wouldn't have much momentum to, to build up. All right. So when we come out, I'm, I'm sideways to John. The leg comes up and around. The other hand comes slightly over to balance. Then put the, bring the foot back in. Shoot a tiger with bow. We're going to step down towards the corner with this neutralize and shift with a bow. This is like drawing a bow, and the arrow just comes right out. This is a very straightforward, simple movement. The neutralize, and this turns into a grab, and this punch. Sometimes, most of the time, we go from palm upward to palm to the side when we punch. For instance, uh, when we're punching, we punch a quarter as opposed to all the way over. This time, the hands are ready after we do turn around and kick. This hands are ready palm inward, so all it's just going to do is come with the body. Now, this the reason it's so powerful is that you have your whole body behind it. And it's called shoot a tiger with bow. OK, so from retreat to right a tiger, turn around and kick horizontally. 
Bring the foot in. Step down towards the corner. The body is, don't turn to face the corner. Your body is still torqued. Then use that torque to shoot the tiger with bow. All right, let's uh, put all of this uh, together. This is quite a lot, huh? Now, next, uh, next lesson, we'll uh, get a good chance to we'll review this, particularly foot kicks, because you'll have had a chance to practice this a little bit. So we'll review it, look at the places that we can make it a little easier, and then um, uh, proceed to the end, all right? So uh, I'll go through up to this point, and then I'll just show you the end. There's, it's just, just very simple to the end. Ward off left. Make sure you gather. Torque. Open. Right push upward. Gather. Torque. Open. Roll back. Gather. Press. Release. Push. Gather. Release. Single whip, transition, make sure you come to 90, gather, open, release. Snake creeps down, open the toe, creep down. Try and keep your back straight, don't bend, keep your back straight. Step up to form seven stars, shift, roll in the back toe, make a fist. Turn out the front toe, make a fist. Step up to form seven stars, dingbo stance on toe. Retreat to ride a tiger, step back and open. Knock off and blah. Turn around and kick horizontally. Turn around, touching, kicking, shoot a tiger with bow. Neutralize and hit. Okay, here's the rest we'll do next time. Step up, deflect downward and punch. There's a little block off. Step up, deflect down and punch. Withdraw and push. Very similar to the pushes on that other side. And finally, conclusion. Of Tai Chi Chuan. Okay, so uh, let's see, we've got a few minutes. So let's review. Um, this section once again. And um, okay, maybe let's put it, uh, let's put it, let's go back to, let's do Fair Lady works at shuttles and then all the way up. Fair Lady works at shuttles. Sinking. Pong. Step around. Neutralize. Pull step and hit. Roll back. Not a separate movement, it's just part of that. I call it just roll back. Then protecting the head, coming down. Neutralize. Close up. Possible arm bar. Open and hit. Coming back. Protect the head. Push. Now, ward off left. Outreach. Neutralize. Step in. Pong. Pull or neutralize into your hip. Step in and right push upward. Roll back. 
press, push. Single whip. Come all the way to the front. Open a bit, pong. Take off and open. He grabs, get out. He punches, block. Step up to form seven stars. He grabs, knock off. He punches, block. He punches, neutralize. Touch, kick. He punches, neutralize, hit to the ribs. Okay, so um, that's really a lot. And um, but next week we have just next lesson. We've got plenty of time to work on everything. So I hope that you're continuing to enjoy this. Please practice. I know most students don't practice nearly enough. You know, it's the practice that's the thing that you're doing. It, that is your Tai Chi. You're doing Tai Chi right now. There's not going to be a time when all of a sudden you're doing Tai Chi. All right? So get in there and do your Tai Chi right now. All right? So thank you very much, and I'll see you again next time. Thank you all.